Steve, who's with me this week. Uh, he's very familiar to some of y'all. He wasn't to me, so it's just some. I'm sorry. It's it's some right. of them. It's all right. Most everybody. Know, if you read the paper, you know him. Uh, Mr. Dwayne Bullard is in the studio with me, and he's from the. Uh, well, I'll let him tell you. I'll let him tell you what he does. Go ahead. Okay, Dwayne Bullard. I'm with the Tippecanoe County Development Foundation. Been there since uh, 2003, and uh, it's my job to not only promote uh, the county and everything that we have going on with our business and industry and uh, grand openings, ribbon cuttings. Uh, I'm also very interested in many other things such as uh, historical preservation, uh, and that's caused me to uh, do quite a few things that uh, studies on our veterans, World War II veterans, and also our history of our Tippecanoe County. And uh, in 2003, when I was asked to come on board uh, to join the county in its development efforts, we'd sort of gotten a little stale as far as Tippecanoe County Development Foundation was concerned, and we were in need of uh, rejuvenating it. And uh, I was hired like in August of 2003, and our banquet was like in October. And uh, I, we didn't have, at that time, they didn't have a speaker, it didn't have a program, and prior to me, there was 18, organization was 18 years old, and uh, they had, the largest banquet we'd ever had was 147 people over the first 18 years. And I told them that I was gonna have over 200 my first year, and they said, no, Dwayne, you don't understand. We, this is Tippecanoe County, they just won't come out for those type of things. And I said, well, we'll have to figure out a way to get people out. So that's when I, decided to go back and, and train people and teach people what the County Development Foundation is all about, how we tend to, uh, I wanted to go back and, and educate the people as to what all is going on in Tippa County. So our first year, uh, I found out that we have never really promoted uh, Blue Mountain College uh, prior to my getting there. So I, I promised Dr. Betty Coward, who is a fantastic president, I promised her that I would not only promote the the uh, college and all of my brochures and pamphlets and things of that nature, but that I would also honor them in my first year's banquet. I didn't know how I was going to do it, so I decided, okay, I'll create a wall of fame. So I built a wall of fame, the history of Blue Mountain College over about a 30-foot wall of fame. And I, I told the people all about the presidents that they'd had. You know, Blue Mountain College has been there since 1873, 1873. And there have only been seven presidents since 1873. Now, you think of that. Now, that's an average of about 30 years per president. That's awesome to me. I, uh, no other college in the United States can compare to that. So I thought that was something that people ought to know and they ought to learn mm -hmm. about the, the presidents. You know, I audited some classes one time at uh, Blue Mountain. I didn't need the credit for anything, so I just audited. I just wanted to do it. It's been a long time ago. But they gave me a real good price on it, and I really like that college. It is really nice. It's not, you know, it's not what you'd expect for no. just a small town college. I mean, it's it's really something. It's well really respected something. throughout the country. It's mm -hmm. highly ranked. Yes, it is, uh, especially for a liberal arts college. Mm -hmm. uh, it's 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 way up there. Yes, it uh, is. They have over 500 students this year, which is the largest they've ever had in the history mm -hmm. of, since 1873. And they're fully expecting over 600 this mm -hmm. fall, uh, so, and they're not ready for 600. I mean, uh -huh. they are in the classroom. And they've gone co-ed. Yes, they have. They went co-ed. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they, that's the reason they're going to grow this year. The athletics and and uh, Lee had mentioned that the athletics is a big part. Yes, they've had the ladies basketball and and other programs, tennis and things like that for years. Now they have men's and women's tennis. They uh -huh. have men's and women's basketball. Starting this coming year, they'll. And they've had uh, cross-country track this past year. This coming year, they will have uh, men's baseball. Uh, they're talking about a golf program, too. Mm -hmm. uh, and they've hired a golf coach recently, uh, Danny McKenzie. And uh, so, they, yeah, they're growing. And, and they don't uh -huh. really have the room as far as dormitories, so they're looking. Uh -huh. I know this summer they're spending a lot of time. They've had a lot of houses donated to them over the years or mm -hmm. given to them. And uh, they... They've had faculty members live on or whatever, but some uh -huh. of them are vacant uh -huh. now, and they have come back now, and they're going to renovate a number of houses. Students are going to be working this summer to renovate houses, and they're going to put, could be as many as eight or ten guys in one uh -huh. house, and maybe that many ladies in another house, yes. depending on what their needs yes. are. 
but it's uh, they're going to need a new dormitory in the very near future. So if anyone's out there looking for a place to leave some money and to uh, help a college out, they really need some help. And uh, and they do have good backing. They have a lot of people that give a lot of money to support the college. Uh, and 600 students for Ripley, that's just like that. That's like 350 to 400 will live on campus. Well, heck, that's that's a new industry. I mean, because mm -hmm. those people uh -huh. live, they eat, they drink, they and they and and buy our commodities or whatever mm -hmm. they need, you mm -hmm. know, from the stores and everything. So things are really, really going to be perking along pretty good yes. in yes, Blue Mountain, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. uh, as I was saying a while ago, we had to do something to to build our program up. So we honored Blue Mountain College on our first year. Uh, <coughs> We really only had about three weeks to promote it, uh, build it, get the invitations out. Uh, we had 225 at our first banquet, and they told us we couldn't have 200, but we did. Uh, so the second year, I said, okay, what can I do? And I was trying to promote that. So we, I decided to branch around, go to different parts of the county mm -hmm. and honor different mm -hmm. sections of the county. So we honored Klebiot the second year. Uh -huh. If you, anyone that's from our area has to know that Klebiot was a huge, huge community back in the late 1800s and early 1900s. Uh, had a major school there. They had nearly 200 students that lived on campus at a agricultural high school. Mm -hmm. It was a major deal for our area. Uh, Duke Humphrey, uh, Humphrey Coliseum at Mississippi State University was named after Duke Humphrey who went through that school and, and was from that area. So there was a lot of history there and I, I, I talked about it and brought it up. They also had the first uh, high school championship team ever for, in Tippa County came from Klebiot in 1937. Oh, really? The girls basketball team won the state championship, beat Meridian. Mm -hmm. And a gentleman in our, well known in our region, uh, Dan Wiggs, was a teacher there at the time at Klebiot in 1937. And uh, you know, he just passed away just oh, recently. Dan Wiggs, yeah. yeah everybody and, uh, knows Dan everybody Wiggs. Everybody knows Dan Wiggs. Yeah, needs did. to, needed to anyway. Yeah, they did. He was a fine gentleman, one of, yes, the, one of the best yes. men I've ever known in my life. And uh, Mr. Dan Wiggs who was a faculty member there, and he loved the sports program. And he <laughs> took his car to uh, the ball game, he and the coach, to drive the girls to the ball game. And you know they didn't have a clue that the girls might win. And he made a little, they made a little side bet, and he told the girls if they won, and he'd drive them back to Jackson, and they'd eat at the finest restaurant on <laughs> on uh, Capitol Street there in Jackson. <laughs> And what, I forget what the, the hotel's name was. It used to be in Jackson, Heidelberg. Heidelberg that's it. There was a restaurant there at the Heidelberg, and uh, so the, anyway, they they beat Meridian at uh, they played them at uh, East Central Community College, I think mm -hmm. it was in De Decatur, Miss not De yeah, it was Decatur, Mississippi, and uh, so they won, and they had a great team, an awesome team, and uh, that group of girls, he they decided to carry them to Jackson, and they did got get to Jackson and he and the coach put their pocketbooks together and had, uh, I think they said they had like two or three dollars and back then you could feed somebody for a quarter and the team and everything. They had just enough but they didn't know how they were going to get home because they didn't know if the <laughs> gas would get them back. So they had to bum some gas from somebody, uh, I forget where it was, but it was in North Mississippi. They had to stop and bum some gas and he had to drive down the next day or two to pay, pay off the gas note. <laughs> But they got the girls fed, they lived up to their honor, and uh, brought them home uh, in 1937, which was a pretty big deal. But I found out there were three of those ladies still living. One of them was LaVera Stark. If y'all don't know her, she lives just past the saving station in Ripley. Sweet little lady, sits in front of me in church. I never knew she was on that ball club until <laughs> I found out and I was told, and, and she was the center. Oh. And she's like four feet nine or ten now I and mean, she's not very tall a little smaller but they played differently then they had mm -hmm. three courts three sections of a court but anyway we did that and uh, found out she and then there were uh, two ladies from the uh, one from the Alcorn Central area and the other one was from Knoxville Tennessee the mm -hmm. one in Knoxville Tennessee had just had surgery that week and couldn't come but the other two ladies made it and uh, that's the best thing I've ever done I mean it was one of the most amazing programs uh, second best thing, I'll take mm -hmm. it back. The veterans program was the best. But we had 330 something at that banquet mm -hmm. uh, the next year. And then I told my wife coming home, I've got. To, I said the Lord's been working on me, and I know what I've got to do next year. And she said, Oh Lord, not already. I said, Yeah. I said I've got to do something uh, to honor the veterans. My dad passed away in 2000. He was a disabled, 100% disabled veteran. And I made 
a promise after he passed away that some, somehow or another I was going to honor he and my mom. My mom was an artist and gifted, gifted lady. She died last year, and, and I wanted to honor them in some form or fashion. And she did my dad a, one of the most fantastic scrapbooks you've ever seen. Uh, he wrote her every day, got home, and she wrote the letter out. She's, a, like I said, an artist, and her handwriting was impeccable. And, and she drew scenes of his travels and everything. Oh, really? You know, of his war travels every, oh, wow. during the thing, and I got all of that. Uh -huh. So I said, I want to do something to honor them. So I did, and uh, didn't know how I was going to do it. Then I decided I'd research, see how many we had. Well, I didn't really know how many we had in this county. But I found out we had 78 that had been born in Tippecanoe, County, still living in Tippecanoe, County, that uh, fought in World War II. Mm -hmm. But then I found out that we had 2006 that actually fought in, from Tippecanoe. County. That sounded like a huge number to me. Yes, but That's over a six-year period, from 41 to through 46. So uh, started doing my research. I thought, well, I'm going to do a lot of research. So I started that in November, right after my banquet ended in October. And... It went uh, like a month, and I already had 16 to pass away. Mm -hmm. And I and I told my assistant at the office, Mr. Deborah Hurd, I, I said, this is killing me. I said, I, I've got to start, and I've got to do something quick. So I went ahead and started trying to p pull people in to interview, and it was very hard to get people to come in to talk about it. it they mm -hmm. just didn't want to say anything. It was, mm -hmm. uh, it was been locked in their head for 60 years, and they, they were okay with that. They just uh -huh. really didn't know. But I had real close friends that were in my Rotary program, Mr. Rayford Long and some of those. And I, I went to Mr. Rayford and I said, Mr. Rayford, this is not for you. This is for your kids and grandkids mm -hmm. and future generations to know and understand what you gave up for your country. Uh -huh. and, uh, I, and he said, well, Dwayne, I, I said, this is the type of questions I'm going to ask. I'm not going to ask you. You don't have to tell me anything that you don't want to tell me, but I want to ask you some pertinent questions. And he did came and uh, he was my best salesman. And then he went out after that and he s would tell the people that I had on my uh -huh. list, he said, look, uh -huh. if you haven't been to speak to Dwayne Bullard on the veterans program, go, he's, he's good, he's, he won't hurt you, <laughs> he's not gonna ask you anything you don't want it to say. You and, know, truly, uh, when they go to war, they're never the same again. No. Uh, my uh, grandson, is, as we speak, is on his way home from Afghanistan. Really? And he'll never be the same again. No, I don't think so. No. You take never. a you take a Tippecanoe County person back in the 40s away from their home, most of them had not been out of the county, much less out of the state. Mm -hmm. If they had, Memphis was probably as far away as they'd ever been That's right. in their life. And you take them away from here, put them on a train, you carry them to New York or to Washington or to Philadelphia, some other areas, and they get on a boat with 20,000 other people on a boat and carry them to a foreign land where they can't even speak the language. Mm -hmm. uh, it had to be a scary situation. These were That's 17, right. 18, That's 19, right. 20 year old guys. Most of them fresh off the farm. Wow, fresh Don't off the farm. That's why my grandson, fresh off the farm. It had to be scary. It, mm -hmm. it really had to be a scary situation. So for them to come in and talk to us mm -hmm. was, I thought, extremely important. It is. And uh, it is. we ended up getting 53. I only mm -hmm. had five people. Uh, that just would not talk to us, and I respect that. That's their prerogative. That's their mm -hmm. ability and rights. Mm -hmm. uh, but those that talked to me, some gave me a, a lot of information. Some gave me all the information they could still remember. Uh, but the stories are wonderful. And that's uh, we have those at our office. We have, uh, I think they're like 20, it's either 26 or 28 uh, DVDs in here. Some of them have one person on them, uh, and they speak a whole hour. And some have uh, three people on them. I think mm -hmm. that's the most is three on on a particular DVD. But I promise you, if you uh, if you can listen to three of those, Are those available for sale? yes, I sell those at my office. So we reproduce them, print them. Uh, we have uh, these are hundred dollars for the set, and that's less than four dollars per DVD. And it's mm -hmm. it's a wonderful thing to have in your thing. We've sent them their own records at the uh, Mississippi. Uh, of the National Museum of Armed Forces at uh, Army Museum at uh, Camp Shelby, their own record there, mm -hmm. at the uh, University of Southern Mississippi's archives, at the University of Memphis archives, mm -hmm. and they're at the uh, uh, Library of Congress ar archives uh -huh. in Washington. So we've made sure copies got out there. Memphis likes it so much, they send uh, uh, graduate students to Tippecanoe County to interview one of our veterans each year. They, oh, that's great. To, uh, that's that part of their great. program. It's a pretty neat deal. Mm -hmm. uh, 
but that's that's a wonderful thing. We had didn't realize how, how big it was going to be, but we finished uh, 53 interviews. And, and again, if you can listen to three of them without shedding a tear, you're a better man than I am because it's I can still listen to them. I've heard them 10, 15 times a piece, mm -hmm. and it'll still bring a tear to my eye when they tell a story. Uh, if something would tear up a veteran, something that happened 60 years ago and still enact a tear from their eye today, that had to be a pretty powerful experience right. that they went through. That's right. And uh, many of them did that, and, and I didn't ask them to do that, but I didn't, I didn't cut anything mm -hmm. in my videos. Mm -hmm. They told me not to do videos when I first started it. The Department of Archives and History, they said that they would prefer just audio, that that's the only thing they'd ever used. I said, I don't know how you could do that. I said, come to one of my programs, and I'm a speaker with Mississippi Humanities mm -hmm. Association and uh, for veterans uh, programs throughout the state of Mississippi. And I usually speak somewhere during Memorial Day or July 4th or Veterans uh -huh. Day during the year. Uh -huh. And I did one in uh, Brandon, Mississippi at the library one time, and the Department of Archives and History came out to view it. And I said, I'm going to show one of the videos while I'm there. Mm -hmm. And I did. And when it was over, they shared with me that they, they were mistaken, that uh, videos do share so much more because it shows the emotions of the gentleman and everything while they're telling their stories rather than just listening to it. You can't mm -hmm. see that. So it was a good deal. Um, now, if you would like a set of these, you can call 837-9088 and uh, place your order. Or you can call 837-3353, which is my office. Mm -hmm. uh, they're $100, and we well, have sets on today. them. Yeah, we're closed. <laughs> Right. You can call now. You can call now here. That's <laughs> correct. And we'll take your message. But that was a big deal then. And uh, we had uh, we did that at the gymnasium. It, uh, it started out, and I said, well, I'm going to have 400. I planned on having 400 and something there. It just kept going and going. We ended up feeding 800 people mm -hmm. at the uh, double That's gymnasium at, uh, at the city, city park system. Mm -hmm. uh, we turned down more than 300 people that uh, wanted to come. They wanted to come from counties all around us. Maybe a son or daughter lost a dad or whatever and a month or two ahead of time. They just wanted to be around veterans and see them mm -hmm. and, and to see what we were mm -hmm. doing. It was a very special night. We gave away special things uh, from uh, Senator, at that time, Senator Lott, Senator Cochran, and uh, Mr. Wicker in our uh -huh. area. We gave away a special uh, commemorative, commemorative plaque uh, to each person. Uh, we uh, gave them a... a uh, Medal mm -hmm. it showed us Tippa mm -hmm. County hero uh, on it. Showed the dates and the, we did that, and that was pretty mm -hmm. special. And we started mm -hmm. after that. We started with a gentleman in uh, South Mississippi wanted to make. I found out wanted to make some uh, canes, veterans canes that had an eagle head on them and uh -huh. had their insignias of the service branch they were in and if they were a uh, Purple Heart person, they got uh -huh. that too. Uh -huh. So we did that, and we've. Since then, we've given all 53 of our veterans uh, That's great. canes, That's and they're great. very special for them. A lot of them still carry them. You can go to Rayford Long's mm -hmm. uh, hospital room at the hospital, and his is right there. If he gets up, he's got his cane in his hand. That's it's a pretty neat deal. Uh, you know, anyway, that's that's as big as we'll ever have. We can't have them that big in Tippecanoe County anymore. They didn't mm -hmm. want to have that many in the gym that night to eat. Uh, we, can, we just can't have any more than that. So we've scaled back. and. Because we can't afford it either. We did all that for free. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't charge anybody anything to go that night, so it was uh, cost us uh, quite a bit of money. But uh, we, we were able to afford it then, and uh, we try to do our banquets where we don't charge our people. Which <laughs> we're the only county in North Mississippi that does that, and we'll continue to do that as long as we can. And we hope people come out to it. Mm -hmm. You had something you were going to ask? Uh, yeah, my dad was a, a veteran, and when he he was in his 80s, and he. He sat me down one day and told me, he said, now, Darrell, when I die, I said, you ain't dying, forget that. <laughs> but he said, when I die, he said, you go to the Veterans Administration. He said, I don't want a headstone like you and James is getting. He said, I, I want that plaque. You know, he, once you're in service, that never leaves you. Right. It never leaves you. All right. It's been 20 years ago now, but I remember my dad, his best friend was really hurt while he was in service after my dad was mm -hmm. hurt too, and they split up. And, but they called every Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. He lived in uh, Hershey, Pennsylvania. And uh, Berkebile was his last name, never forget it. And uh, But they talked for years. They would carry on a conversation. And then one day, my dad found out that he had a 
uh, Mr. Berkebile had a camper and they were traveling through going to Florida. Uh -huh. And Dad said, well, why don't you come through North Mississippi and come by and visit me? My, I'm from Iuka originally, uh -huh. and my dad never uh -huh. in Iuka. And so they did, and, and uh, I traveled up to visit him and, and meet with him. And, and I've never seen two men were like little boys. They just kept their arms around each other it just never the whole goes time. Away. That's right. They never were so close. And, uh, and My dad's brother is buried in Jefferson Barracks. And uh, that, that's important to our family, and, and it was very important to my father. And so he came to live with me, so forget that. <laughs> <laughs> well, but he wanted that, that plaque. That's what he wanted at his grave, and it was important to him. Sure. And the uh, American Legion came, and they, you know, they brought a flag, and, you know, and, and at the end of the funeral they took it off, they folded that. And, you know, that's something that will go to my grave with me. That's very precious to me. Right. Very Mr. precious. Uh, Mr. Roy LaBrier passed away just a week or so ago, and uh, he was one of my veterans. And, and I try to keep up with all my mm -hmm. veterans and what's going on in their lives. And he, he had, uh, uh, they had a military funeral for him. And uh -huh. that's very, uh, if you haven't been to where there's a military funeral, it's very honoring and it is. it's very uh, emotional to, mm -hmm. to it is. hear the gun salutes and the mm -hmm. flag being uh, draped over the coffin and then wrapped up through the ceremony. And it, it's a, it's a, honor that they uh -huh. earned and they deserve, that's for sure. Anyway, later on, uh, a few years later, I'll skip some of the things, but we got into, uh, I told, I asked for a copy of a picture from, uh, and I knew that Tommy Covington had it at the library. He was still working at the library. So mm -hmm. I went to Tommy and said, Tommy, I need a picture of such and such. And he went back into his room and said, I think I've got one somewhere. So he brings it back out to me and, and uh, he had this album, and I was looking for this picture, and I noticed in the album that there was a picture or two missing. And I said, Tommy, what was He said, well, I don't know. I've let somebody look at these, and, and they've uh, taken them. And I said, took them? I said, but that's one of a kind. He said, I've lost that one. Yeah. And another picture or two had somebody where they cut a face out, you know, to keep it, really. And, and I said, oh, Tommy, you can't let that happen. No, I knew we had at my office the ability awesome. to scan pictures mm -hmm. and to put them into files and documents. So we, uh, we did that. And I told mm -hmm. Tommy to start, and he did. It took him about six months, but he gave me all of my his material, and that's what started us into a pictorial history of uh, Tippa County. And that's also for sale at our office. Uh, we, it took us nearly a year in our spare time and everything to uh, document over 9,000 old-time pictures. Mm -hmm. They date back into the mid-1850s all the way up to, to uh, about 1970 in some cases. Uh, but we have them not only do we have them uh, documented. We categorized them into mm -hmm. categories, and they're in the categories as Blue Mountain College, Colonel W.C. Faulkner, Paul J. Rainey Estate, First Monday Trade Days, Mississippi Heights Academy, Brown and McKnight. And those are Brown and McKnight is uh, Andrew Brown, and McKnight was an old time uh, photographer that was well known uh, throughout the country, and uh, he was in Mississippi, or in Ripley, Mississippi at the time. He f later on moved to Aberdeen. And you had past treasures. Tip of school buildings, and probably most people don't realize we had over 60 to 70 schools in Tippa County at some point in time since right. 1900. Uh, then we have pictures of all the schools in Tippa County back to as far as we can go back, which is around 1900. Mm -hmm. uh, the World War II veterans and their pictures, TCDC clubs, which we are a major sponsor of, churches in Tippa County, family history, family pictures. Mm -hmm. uh, the People's Bank, its history since its beginnings in the 1920s. Uh, Tippa County Historical Museum and all the history there. And then Ruckersville, <clears throat> TCDC, had a major celebration this past year and we got all of their historical pictures. You know, some of those little one-room school buildings are still standing. Still standing. There's one at Faulkner and I know there's one down on Dry Creek. So I'm sure there's more. And we, I'm, mm -hmm. There's not many more there all day. <laughs> but uh, we do have pictures, and if you're interested in those, there's uh, some 24 p sets of uh, DV or CDs there. Uh, some of them have over 1,000 pictures on a one CD, and some mm -hmm. probably only have four or 500, but there's about 9,000 total out of the 24 uh, CDs. And if you want those, again, we have them even documented and, and categorized, and all the pictures are labeled in the... Uh, in a directory that you get with the with the uh, CDs. Mm -hmm. We're supposed well, to be breaking here. Commercial. Okay. Uh, Tony, let's cut to a commercial. We'll be right back with more. <laughs>
I have Mr. Dwayne Bullard with me from the Tippa County Foundation Development Association, I think it is. Tippa County Development Foundation. I knew I'd get it wrong. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> I knew I'd get it wrong. We're anyway, he knows about Tippa County's foundations. That's it. We're going to uh, talk about the other things that everybody wants to know about as far as the roads and and businesses and things like that in just a minute. I want to mention one more thing. We also have, uh, besides the World War II veterans and the tip of treasures, which is the history of Tippa County on pictures, we also have uh, helped to sponsor and produce uh, with Union County a booklet <clears throat> that has all of the old, it's also with uh, Blue Mountain College, Ripley, and, and uh, New Albany, all of the old photographs of uh, postcards and things of all the counties. And it's a pretty good little document. We have those yeah. for sale in our office too. And that was a joint effort. Now, as far as the county is concerned, uh, number one, uh, what, not, well, not one, but the first thing on my little list here that I was going to mention is the old jail archives building. Uh, everybody knows what the old jail is still standing. Well, in 2001, they were going to tear it down after they completed the other uh, new jail that we have in Ripley. And uh, I had requested that they not tear it down. <clears throat> I was still working at Dixonet at that time, and and I thought that it could uh, become a good archive for us for our historical documents that's uh -huh. in the courthouse. Mm -hmm. And people have been complaining for years that we didn't have a good place to store our documents and they were having to go up to the third floor to look for them. And, and uh, we were able to get some money, uh, about $200,000 in grant monies that we were able to save the old jail and uh, restore it, uh, made it uh, humidity proof, basically. We have a heating air conditioning system in it that uh, keeps it at a humidity mm -hmm. comfortable range. And uh, we were able to get some file storages and bins that are able to store a lot of the old time books. If anybody's seen the books, they're 17, 18 inches tall and real thick and heavy and takes a, some heavy equipment to, or storage bins to store those things. But we have enough downstairs to house about 850 to 900 of the books uh, we have since then have moved about 500 and something already to the to the storage area and archive building, and we've contracted with the uh, oh, not contracted, but they go do it for free. The uh, Latter Day Saints <coughs> program out of uh, Salt Lake City, Utah, is going to come very soon, and and video all of it, take pictures of every page and everything, and we'll oh, give us CDs on it. Yeah. And the people will be able to take a CD and look at it rather than having to take the books out and thumb through it mm -hmm. and find it. Uh, so it's going to be a huge Those advantage. Those books are, are fragile. I remember oh, there very. used to be books behind the courthouse, you know, behind that little wall. And a friend of mine wanted to look up something about her grandfather, and we spent a day up there. And it's had some really neat stuff. Oh, very, oh, very yeah. good. Oh, uh yeah. -huh. Somebody was fined a dollar for cussing in the Kirk <laughs> churchyard and... Man, we read some real neat stuff in there. Well, people were, uh, people are people, and, and they're going to do what they can. And, well, I and still you, don't want them to cuss in the churchyard. <laughs> but, no, I mean, <laughs> if they go in to look for something of a family nature that's in, yes. the, in an old book yes. from the 1800s, mm -hmm. and, and they're in a room by themselves, and they find it in a book, and rather than take the book and make a copy, they tear the page out. Oh, oh, no. And that was terrible, no. and we, got, we had to stop that, and this is the way we can stop it and still allow mm -hmm. people to do research. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, since we've done that and have that, and, and like I said, the Latter-day Saints will be here any time now, uh, we tore down the old uh, living quarters of the jail, mm -hmm. and, and the reason being, it was just in peril. Uh, yeah. We just couldn't have the money to repair it and mm -hmm. put it back into mm -hmm. condition. But we've since then, we've received some uh, stimulus applications through the federal government, and I've made application for a $200,000 grant to rebuild us a new community room and viewing room that will mm -hmm. go adjacent to the jail and it will look like the jail uh -huh. if, once it's completed. I have the drawings and everything ready. Uh, they have called me from Senator Cochran and Senator Wicker's office and interviewed me and they think it's a viable option to do that. So I think uh, sometime this summer we'll get those funds and be able to do that. And that'll what be a he's tremendous telling advantage. you is he's going to do it and he's not going to raise your taxes That's to do it. it. Yeah, no money. That's it. Grant is free money. <laughs> Uh, and we like free money. Uh, so we're looking for $200,000, and, and the building would cost us That's around right. 160, 70000 And then the rest of the money uh, hopefully will be used to buy computers to view mm -hmm. it with. Mm -hmm. It'll have bathrooms, a kitchen, and a viewing room that we can have community meetings and things uh -huh. in, too. So it's, it'll serve many purposes. Uh, that's the old jail 
Archive building. Now, <laughs> Highway uh, 15, everybody wants to know about the four-lane system, what's going to happen there, those of you that are keeping Besides up. tearing down houses. And yeah, yeah, that's yeah, pretty yeah. much. Okay, that's what we've very, done so far. Very few that yes. uh, have to be torn down now. Mm -hmm. there, there's still a few landowners that are still in mitigation, I guess you'd call uh -huh. it, uh, that uh, will have to go to court to settle their land issues. Uh -huh. But a very few. Uh, most everything was was sold and moved or torn down or whatever. Uh, but the first contract was let last on the 27th of April. Uh, it went to a company out of Nesbitt, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. uh, one of our local companies uh, has a big part of that though, a WG Construction out of New Albany. Uh, we'll have the paving portion of it. <clears throat> and the first contract covers from Kings Creek, which is just south of the I-22 or the Highway 78 mm -hmm. uh, intersection, uh, down uh, basically bound to about United uh, Funeral Home down that direction, mm -hmm. back to North Haven, which is north of New Albany. Mm -hmm. uh, there's about three major bridges on that stretch, uh, but that's the first contract that's been let. Uh -huh. uh, they'll start sometime toward the end of this month. Uh, you'll see some things happening and moving. I'm sure you'll see uh, uh, in a very, very new f few weeks or this week, next week, or before the end of the month, you'll see uh, uh, the grocery store north of New Albany start to move into their building, new building. That's really the last thing uh -huh. that needs to be moved in uh -huh. Union County, I think. Uh, we've been told that the second contract will be let, uh, as of right now, is scheduled to be let in August and that'll be from North Haven to the Tippecanoe County line. Uh -huh. uh, we've also been told originally that it was supposed to get through uh, Faulkner by 2015, but things are happening so much faster. They've been able to save some money here and there. The contract that was led on the first contract is for less money than they were anticipating, so there's more money in the pot and you'll get to do more things. So uh, they'll let the third portion of the contract the way I hear it, it will be from Highway 4 to north of Falk Faulkner, mm -hmm. uh, about a, well, not a half mile, whatever, north of Faulkner. And then the last part of the contract will be from the Tippa County line to Highway 4. Mm -hmm. And that'll be all new road. All of that from, basically from the Tippa County line to, uh, to as far as Gay Truck Line, where it comes uh -huh. back in, will be uh -huh. new roads. So yeah. it won't bother us with our travels mm -hmm. and all of our enterprises that we have going on right now with Ashley and with Hudson's and other That's things. Good. It good. won't bother their transportation mm -hmm. routes any at all and will not hinder their production. So that's Okay, good tell me what this road is going to do for us. It's going <laughs> to opens up so many new doors. Uh, many companies, uh, we're not in line for any tier ones with Toyota because we're not on the four lane. Uh, this, they're delaying Toyota in, in essence has helped us a little bit because it buys us time and gets the road started and, and, and gets it into our county to allow us to compete hopefully for tier one at a later date. We, do, we already can compete with the tier two and three which they haven't even decided who they will be yet. And there's still a number of tier ones that'll have to come into the area. So, you know, I, I anticipate they're gonna do something uh, oh, you're talking jobs for I'm our talking, kids. Oh, oh yes, yeah, very yeah. much so. Uh, there are a lot of restaurants that won't come to your community until you get on a four lane mm -hmm. or until you reach a certain level uh -huh. as far as population is concerned. Uh, a lot of restaurants won't come until you hit the 10,000 threshold. A lot of restaurants will not see you until you're on a four lane. So mm -hmm. there's a, a hotels and motels uh, won't come until you're on a four lane. So there's there are lots of reasons that mm -hmm. it's going to be a benefit to us. Plus, it gets our truck traffic out of our city streets, and, and that's what's hindering us right now. We have, there's almost 500 tractor trailers just with Ashley on a 24-hour basis, seven days a week in our in our community. Now, you may not realize that until you get out yeah. on the road and you get behind four or five in a row, but it's all day long right. and night. And we've been extremely <laughs> lucky that one of our citizens, senior citizens or whatever, hasn't been hurt uh, on the roads because of that much truck traffic. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of traffic on a two-lane road. Mm -hmm. uh, it, is. it is. And then we throw in first Monday mm -hmm. weekends uh, every four weeks or whatever, and, you know, whether it be a bad weekend like the weather that we've just mm -hmm. had or whether it's a good weekend, whether you have 50,000 people in, in the community, it just ties your community up, and this will allow our truck traffic to get off the road. It's not going to hurt us. <coughs> Some people think it's going to hurt uh, retail sales. And that. No, it won't do anything but help us. There's only going to be two exits off of it. One's on Highway 4 and the other one's in our industrial park. 
there will be a crossover road or two, but it's not something that people will normally take other than local traffic to, mm -hmm. to get to here and there. But the Hudson's plant that's in Blue Mountain now, their truck traffic's going to stay on the two-lane road. Mm -hmm. Big M Trucking is on the two-lane road. They're going to stay on it. Uh, they can drive to the end of uh, where 15 will branch away, which will be at the county line just below Blue Mountain Trucking, and get on it and be in fine shape. So there won't be any problems there. Mm -hmm. and It will ultimately help the county and allow our citizens to be safer in the community, and it will draw traffic into us in two areas that will be good. Uh, there won't be any retail space on the industrial side where it comes out in the industrial park. There might be some on Highway 4 east uh, going toward Boonville area, but th there's just not going to be a lot of land there for a lot of retail development. You've got a church on mm -hmm. one side of it that mm -hmm. blocks you too. Yeah. So it's uh, it'll be limited, and there won't be yeah. any other access roads coming off of it, so it either has to be a frontage road that the county or city will have to build uh, to create more land you know, mm -hmm. to build on. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that is a possibility, but that's in the future. But that's well, a, I, I don't know about y'all, but I'm for jobs. <laughs> Amen. Now, these young people need jobs. They sure do. We're all for jobs. And it's something we, you know, start my morning every morning praying, Lord, you know, guide Absolutely. me to, in direction to Absolutely. give us more jobs. And it's it's a it's a difficult thing. But we do have the Hudsons in uh, Blue Mountain. They're blowing and going. Uh, that's fantastic. They hired 20 more people about a week ago. That's uh, They're going to be hiring 40 right. more in just a few more weeks. Uh, they'll have three to 400 people by next summer. Uh, there's no doubt they're adding stores throughout North Mississippi. Their goal is to add 40 more stores in North Mississippi at about 20 mm -hmm. people per store. That adds about 800 more people to to the uh, area. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll have a store here in Tippa County in the next four to five weeks. They're working on That's it right. as we speak. It'll be right. in Blue Mountain. It'll be on the south end of the building at Blue Mountain, and there'll be signage mm -hmm. and everything directing mm -hmm. there. But and there'll be notices in the paper uh, as to when that'll open, but they're looking at uh, a little over four weeks, and that'll be open. They opened That's one right. in Tupelo last week, uh, and they'll be opening one or two pretty much weekly or every other week for a number mm -hmm. of weeks. Uh, there's about a $350,000 grant uh, that'll be operating there at that place. We're going to redo the uh, pavement all around the building. Mm -hmm. It's in dire need. It's broken yes. up in a lot of places where the truck traffic that Benchcraft and Berkline had for years. Uh, but that contract will be let pretty soon uh, for a new paving contract mm -hmm. completely around the building. It's a mile. It's one mile around that building. If anybody yes, wants to is. know, that's a big building. Yes, it's a, it over is. a million square feet. Actually, I was a security guard okay. there, and I've walked that. Well, it's, <laughs> it's every bit of a it's mile. It's very large. <laughs> Maybe um, more. And uh, we're very lucky to get Hudson's in there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a distribution yes. center. And, yes, we are. And uh, they're creating a lot of jobs for the community, and they're good corporate people, and uh, they've uh, they, do, they do very well, so we're very That's proud good. of them, and we, we like the people there. Uh, Big M Trucking is right behind it. They took over where Blue Mountain Trucking was. Mm -hmm. They have about We moved them from Hickory Flat into Tippa County. They have about 240 employees or so right now. Uh, they have well in excess nearly of 300 trucks uh, that they operate throughout the country, uh, probably five, six, seven hundred 700 trailers. I don't know exactly how many. It changes all the time, but they have a lot of trailers. Uh, they, they've outgrown their building. Uh, they're needing more space, and I know the county, uh, to get them more space, we needed some grant money, and they can't get grant money as a private company, so the county ended up buying uh, seven, about 16 more acres uh, mm -hmm. that uh, Berkline owned with the print shop building behind it, uh, got it at, at a very reasonable rate. We've leased that back to Massengill. They make the payments on the, right. on the note. Uh, we'll, that allowed us to get about $500,000 in grant money that will rehab the uh, print shop building for a logistics facility for them. And the logistics mm -hmm. facility will add another 30 or 40 more jobs, good paying jobs to our community. And that'll be later in the summer before mm -hmm. we can do that. Uh, but that'll also create a better road for them from the highway to their facility. Right now the road's tearing up with the uh, truck loads that are coming in yeah. on a daily basis. Yeah. and but we'll be able to redo that road also. And we were able to take the trees off the back lots uh, so that uh, hopefully soon we'll uh, find some more grant money and we'll be able to create a big uh, parking area for all of his trailers over the weekends. Right now they're utilizing some of Hudson's property. You uh, notice he said grant money. He didn't say oh, what's yeah. your tax. We're not using tax money. We're using grant <laughs> Every money. Every time we see a, a building go up, we worry about our taxes. 
but no, he's not me, talking about. You're going to hear taxes. me mention more than a million dollars in mm -hmm. uh, in grant monies that we've received just that's this right. past year for Tippa County, and that's what we try. We try to get as many grant dollars as we possibly can. Uh, Big M Trucking, I think, will be at 300 people uh, before the end of this year, and that's a huge advantage for our county. It and is. they're it tagging is. all of their vehicles and trailers in Tippa County, and that adds to our tax mm -hmm. revenues coming into the county, mm -hmm. too. So that's a big deal. That's great. Uh, the Hankins Access Road at, in front of Hankins mm -hmm. uh, Sawmill and in Inc. Uh, out on the eastern part of the county will be completed very soon. That's, uh, again, that was grant monies. We did have to spend some local match money, but that was just uh, county uh, carrying some dirt, things like that that we already had. We didn't have to go out and buy anything new, and mm -hmm. so that was good. Uh, but that's about a $400,000 project that we were able to do out there, and it creates a huge advantage for Hankins. If you don't know, Hankins receives anywhere from 130 to 150 loads per day. Mm -hmm. And this is big tractor trailers with big loads of timber on the end of it. It's a, it's a, it's a hazard. And when five or six of them have to back up on a two-lane road or, or stand in line to wait to turn in, it causes a hazard for people that are traveling to and from and, and don't know that they're there and they're coming mm -hmm. from the east to the west and they top a hill and there's a big tractor trailer rig yes. with, with logs sticking out. There's been a couple of wrecks out there. Yes, ma'am. Yes, it has. So this was a safety thing that we needed mm -hmm. to do. MDOT uh, is paving it as we speak right now. And it'll be a tremendous advantage for, for Hankins. And they even widen the turning lane so that when the trucks turn and the logs sweep out, the cars still have room to pass. That's so huge. it's a huge advantage for us, uh, again, at uh, Hankins. We have an incubator building, and I'm just going down my list mm -hmm. real quick. We have an incubator building in an industrial park. that We have a school called Mill Creek. Uh, it, it's a school for troubled kids. Uh, they have about 15 to 16 kids. from. They're coming from four or five different counties in North Mississippi. Um, it's in Tip County? Yes, ma'am. Where? And uh, It's in our industrial park, in our North, Ri that? North Ripley Industrial Park. They've been there a little over a year. You'd be surprised what's here we don't I'm even know about. You. And uh, they have uh, nurses and they have a uh, principal and all kinds of things there. And, and uh, we remodel part of the in our incubator building for that. Uh, they have a playground inside in the back, uh, which they have goals, basketball goals and soccer things. They can play on the concrete about they occupy about 7,000 square feet of a 20,000 square foot building. We have other industries that are renting some space uh, in the other side. And we still have some more sp space right. available for, for lease or rent for warehouse space if you need it. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're, we've get it, gotten an $80,000 grant uh, right. through a special, special needs thing that uh, we're through the DRA, they call it the Delta Regional Authority out of, it's similar to ARC. And uh, we'll be letting that lease uh, or letting that uh, contract out in the next month or so to do that. It'll be a new parking lot. It paves and concretes into our dock doors and everything and uh -huh. gives us a safer working environment for the people mm -hmm. there. Uh, Walden Industrial Park. We have nearly 800, uh, 800 excuse me, 400 acres in Walden Industrial Park. Uh, we have a new water tank that's been up there a little over a year and a half or two. We're in dire need of a water well up there. Uh, they had a major breakdown in January up there that uh, caused the uh, city of Walnut to be without water. Uh, they get their water from an old well and, and another newer well, but the old well went down on them. The newer well was only operating at, at a certain percentage. Uh, it couldn't keep the town and the water tanks up, and the water tank drained at the industrial park. So we have got to very soon, and it'll be with grant monies, and the city of Walnut will have to put in some money. But we've uh, got to drill another well in the industrial park to mm -hmm. service that tank and to service their industries up there and give uh -huh. them the protection they need for insurance purposes. So that will be happening pretty soon. Abbey Manufacturing is growing up there. Uh, they, they're they adding and probably would be doing some more expanding in a very few months. That's good. Uh, North Ripley Industrial Park, we have over 370 acres available there. As you well know, know our uh, four-lane highway will go right through it. Uh, it will we will be paid for that and, and paid fairly well for that money or for that property that they're getting about 70 acres through there. Uh, but that will open up our land two ways. We'll have one section of land with the railroad, which we never had any land with mm -hmm. the railroad until we part, purchased that property. The other side is, a four, uh, was, is on Pocahontas Road, which is a blacktop road all the way down it. <clears throat> so we have two wonderful pieces of property there. Uh, we also have uh, AgriSale owns two buildings, and we're showing those properties as we speak. 
and hopefully we'll have good luck in the coming weeks uh, with an announcement or two on those properties. But mm -hmm. that's all I can tell you at the moment. We have another company that will be here on Thursday of this week. They hope to lease some space from us or uh, in June, uh, starting in June, and we'll be in production, uh, scheduled to be in production in September, and you'll hear more about that in very soon too. Uh, Industrial Timber is out there. They're working full five, six days a week doing very well. Five Star Industries purchased the Rockwater facility. We have some things going on. Elite Elastomer is going very well. Elite Solutions, a subsidiary of theirs, is going very well. Alico is going very well. Uh, they produce uh, foam for furniture industry in the area. Carolina Accents is across the road, and RES, our Resourceful Environmental Services place, is also in that industrial mm -hmm. park. And there will be uh -huh. one major intersection there that will take care of that area. Of course, I've already told you the Blue Mountain Industrial Park, and that has Hudson's Big M, and mm -hmm. also in that location is Grissom's Building Supply, which is occupying the old Polycraft building down there, and uh, they plan to start their construction. Uh, they're going to make like a mini Lowe's down there, uh -huh. which it'll be a center that everyone will be able to go into and know what you're finding and walk around, and it'll be a kitchen area and bathroom areas and, and so on that you mm -hmm. can see a finished That'd product. Be, good. be very good for the citizens. Yes. Uh, Ripley Industrial Park uh, is behind the elementary school. That's where Kirkwood Manufacturing used to be until they sold out to Carolina Accents and they moved out to the industrial park. Uh, there is one building out there that we're still showing, 52,000 square feet. Uh, we don't own it. Uh, we don't own any of our buildings in the county. AgriSale owns two of the buildings and uh, Carolina Accents owns one of the buildings out there, but we're marketing all three buildings as we speak. We're on all the national marketing services, state marketing services. We're showing the buildings. We, uh, we've we shown them probably eight or ten times recently, and there's just a lot of buildings in North Mississippi. There's over 150 buildings just in the Northeast Mississippi right now, and a lot of cheap buildings. And uh, we're, we basically show ours at the price that we can according to whoever owns mm -hmm. it. Uh -huh. uh, A few more things that I do want to share with you is the, before our time runs out here, we have a, there's a ribbon cutting this week on uh, Wednesday of this week at 1230 at the new family care medical facility just north of town. Anyone, please come by. They have a beautiful building. It's a big building. Uh, Ms. Wanda Stroop is the nurse practitioner there, and she is doing a wonderful job. And they, they're going to start programs for uh, uh, children and adults that uh, have a problem with their weight. Uh, they're going to start programs very soon with those program with uh, with that, and invite children and adults and teach them how to not only plan their meals but teach them how to exercise and other things to to uh, hopefully live a better life. Mm -hmm. uh, very soon we'll have a CVS pharmacy in town. It's uh, it's pretty much a known deal now, and it's uh, but we're not too far off and. But to, before they come, other people will have to build new buildings elsewhere before they can do that. So I, I would look for them for about a year, but give the people time to rebuild their buildings and yeah. know where they're going. Yeah. Uh, there's other things that are happening in the county. We've got some more plant uh, expansions. I'm not at liberty to tell you about them at the moment because they're still in the planning process, but we have some plant expansions being planned. Uh, renewals and things that are, are happening good in our community. Mm -hmm. I know everyone wants it to be zero percent, but it's not going to be there, not for a long time. I wish it was, but uh, we lost Benchcraft. We lost uh, 2,200 people at one time. Uh, right on the end, we lost 800 people at, at uh, Berkline, and uh, it takes a long time to make that up. Yes, and does. we're doing yes, it. it. We're doing it in small numbers, 100 here and 200 there, but uh, we're going to make it up. We're going to do well. And uh, this county, uh, with the four lane coming our way, we're going to see some good things and positive things in the near future. And that's telling you, Tippy County is going and growing. Sure are going and growing, honey. And, and we're looking forward to having more jobs and, and better roads. And and you'd be surprised what people are doing for us when when we don't even know about it. We yeah. surely don't. We work every day. It's a, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we're not a rich county. Uh, we have people out there though that do have means. And if they do have means and they can share some of those means with people to help them that's get started right. in business. Please do. Uh, mm -hmm. Everybody, there are a lot of good ideas out there, but there's not a lot of money for people to start their new ideas. Mm -hmm. We've had a lot of companies to come to see us, but they just can't come up with the money.
to start to get into the building, to make the payments, uh -huh. to start their operations, and they're working on it. I mean, they're trying to raise money, but there's just not a lot of people out there willing to give up uh, a million or two million That's dollars right. to start a company. That's right. You can't start a company without capital, oh, yeah. and it takes yeah. uh, banks are are a little more le are a little more cautious in yeah, today's time. Than they used to, to be. right. Uh -huh. uh, but well, things are getting better. You know, I've appreciated so much you coming today. Thank you for asking. And uh, I really enjoyed this, and I hope that we've got a lot of information out there, and people will be more encouraged about Tip County. Because, honey, we're going and growing. This has been Daryl's Little Corner. Hon, we'll be with you every Monday from 7 till 8. Y'all be sure and stay tuned for Ron and Dave's Gospel Hour. They'll come on just as we go off. Hon, well, right after the commercial break. We're, you never know what we're going to do next, Hon. We, sometimes we have live interviews. Sometimes we'll have filmed interviews. Sometimes we'll have crafts. Never know what we're going to do. So y'all do join us again this Monday night. Tony cut us to a commercial.